Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. I'd like to welcome, um, thank all my subscribers and um, welcome and thank all my new subscribers. I want to uh, show you uh, some microwave bowl holders. I did a video a few years back. I'm just, this is a new update. Um, this one is uh, a 10 by 10. Let me see if I can move this up just a little bit so you can see it a little bit better. Oh, hold on a minute. Okay, so this is a 10 by 10, and it, it uh, ends up doing your regular, this thing just, hold on a minute. There we go. It in, uh, a 10 by 10 makes it for a cereal bowl, and this is what it ends up looking like when it comes out. If it's a cereal bowl, a soup bowl, and you put it in the microwave and you don't burn your hands on it, you can also put ice cream in it. Um, this is a 12 by 12. It's more um, like a medium size serving bowl size for this one. So you can see the difference. And then I don't have a bowl big enough, but this is, I, I'm working on an order that I had got <clears throat> over the weekend. And it's, it's a really big order. Um, a couple hundred dollar order. So, and this is, uh, the big one that it goes. I don't have a bowl this big because we don't do, uh, anything that we had that big of get togethers, gathers even anymore, even some of my china. So it tells you the difference. This is a 12 by 12, a 10 by 10. I mean, I'm sorry, a 15 by 15, a 12 by 12 and a 10 by 10. <clears throat> Excuse me. And the most important thing I want to share with you is um, if you're going to make these, you can go to like Joann's and stuff and you can um, go into their bolt section and you'll see that they have 100% cotton bat in there. I want to warn you, don't use that batting. It has traces of uh, polyester in it and that will cause it to catch on fire. The only thing that is really... Um, meant for microwavable uh, bowls, my, uh, potato bags, is this one. And this will give you uh, a direction thing if you want to make one of their style of potato bags on the back. But this is, it's uh, called Wrap and Zap. It's 100% nat natural cotton. It doesn't have any polyester or anything. So please don't buy the um, batting by the bolt and... Um, and make them that way because it won't work. You also need a hundred percent cotton thread. Walmart sells it. It's like seven dollars of a spool. Uh, you will need a hundred percent cotton fabric. And it makes sure when you read it, it says a hundred percent cotton fabric. I can't stress that enough. To make this, you're going to need uh, this one is a twelve by twelve that I'm going to be making and sharing with you. You're going to need two pieces of batting at 12 by 12. You'll need uh, two pieces of fabric that is 12 by 12. And you're going to place them on your batting and line that up. Um, well, before you place that on your batting, what you're going to do uh, is you're going to take this and you're going to fold this and then you're going to press it, which I already did. You're going to take it again. You're going to fold it the opposite direction. And you're going to press it. Like I said, I already did that because I wanted to save some time on this video. So wh what you'll do is you'll take this and you will lay this on top of your batting and smooth that out. You can um, pin this here to hold it in place. And I'll warn you, if you're going to buy pins from Amazon, these pins that you get, they come in a big stack, like five or six. I don't remember what I had, but they had a bunch of stacks with them. They're garbage. Don't buy them. They bend. Is, uh, I've been throwing away tons of them. They bend as, as soon as you're trying to uh, use them. So what you're going to do now, you got your fabric all pressed out here. You got it. You ironed it and from corner to corner, corner to corner by flipping it, pressing it, flipping it, pressing it. So now what we're going to do is we're going to sew from this corner to this corner. And so it's going to come all the way down this way. We're going to do that. And then when I'm done with that, we're going to sew from the opposite corner to the opposite corner. So let me get that going right there. 
I bring my sewing machine over here. You, I, I used a rotary cutter, um, a ruler, and my cutting mat for this. If you got just a ruler and stuff, however you cut fabric. But this one is a 12 by 12. I have a bunch of 10 by 10s done. I've done uh, videos on the 10 by 10, so I figure I would do one on the 12 by 12 while I was working on my order. This is a great craft fair, fair thing. Um, these orders come from my craft fair. People that have bought them and are wanting more, they took my phone number and they called and asked could they get more. I get orders all year long like this. I back stitch and then I just cut it off. I go back to the next corner. See, I, I sewed that. I don't know if you can see that in there, but the stitching is right here. You can kind of see it from the back a little bit better. So now I'm going to go to this corner and I'm going to do the same thing to stitch this corner to the next corner. And when you press it, the, the crease from pressing it is what helps you stay on your line to your next corner. And you'll notice if your fabric, if you cut it a little big or something, because it's not going to line up when you press it. So, so now what we're going to do, we have this sewn corner to corner on each one. I'm going to fold this in half and do my corners like this. But first make sure that, I almost forgot, take, my, take your pins out because you don't want to leave no pins in there. I already took the other, the other one there. All right, so I have no pins in here. Fold this corner to corner. And see these pins, they're really crappy to stick in. They're, they're garbage. See, I just bent that one. And I have thrown away so many of them. And I forgot when I bought stuff the other day to pick up new pins. Okay, so now we got this one corner to corner. And I use one of these uh, little sticks, dowel rods, or you can use a ruler. I like to stick it in, side the fabric all the way, and I like to uh, pull it to make sure my fabric is lined um, up against the back. Because what we're going to do now is you're going to place the fold towards you. And on this bowl size, this one we're going to come across one inch. And make a little mark and then we're going to come down two and a half inches and we're going to connect that the dots and we're going to draw a line like that and then i'm going to take it and i'm going to flip it over and i'm going to do the same thing i'm going to do one inch two and a half inches and then i'm going to connect the dots <clears throat> and now we're going to sew this. We're going to sew from this corner to that corner. And then we'll flip it. And we'll sew from this corner to this corner. So let me get this sewed. And the biggest thing is to make sure you back stitch. That way your stitches aren't going to come unloose. Now I'm flipping it. And I'm sewing from the corner to the corner. I bought this little brother's because my Husqvarna is acting up and uh, it's an embroidery machine but I haven't embroidered with it yet but the only thing I don't like about it it's really super slow where the Husqvarna sews really really fast so now all I did was I stayed I sewed on the line and I stayed away from the line and I cut along that and I'm gonna do the same thing here we have the line and I'm just gonna stay a little bit away from that line where I sold and I'm gonna cut that off. So now it should look like this. We're going to unpin it. Going to open it up. And now you have your two pleats here on the side. What you're going to do is you're going to bring that together. And you're going to fold it in half. And we're going to pin it again. 
so the back side will be straight. I will put the measurements down below. Um, I have it in my other videos too, but that I did for the 10 by 10. Like I said, I was working on this one, so I figured uh, I would show you guys a video of it. Okay, so now I got that in there. I'll take my dowel rod again. And you don't have to do this. I do that because I want to make sure when I'm sewing the corners and that I'm uh, cutting that I'm getting all that fabric back there so that the inside of my bow is not going to be all messed up. See, because this one is a little wrinkled. So that way, see how nice the fabric lays flat together there? And that's what you want to make sure. So when you're sewing along here and here and you're cutting, you're getting that fabric and it's not bunching inside your bow. So once again, we'll come back over one inch, come down two and a half inches, and we'll connect them dots. These um, go pretty fast when I have big piles set up. I, I'll do certain parts and then just set up big piles. I do all my cutting, put it in there, and then I just, uh, let me show you real quick. Like this is what I've got left to do. The big ones, I'll cut the fabric, press it, a layer of the batting, fabric, press it, layer of the batting, and I'll do different steps like that to move um, down the road. And then what I do is uh, the next step up, what I'll do, I'm sorry to get off track. I'm just showing you how you can multiple task these. I'll uh, sew all my corners like we just did. I pin them together, and then I put the bowls together. And then I do all the sewing on that. So you can mass produce these really good. So back to what I was saying on here, I didn't mean to sidetrack. I should have probably waited. But I went from one inch across, two inches down. I flipped it. I went from one inch across, two inches down. We're going to sew that. And you're going to do this the same step on both pieces. Because remember, you got to have two pieces. So you'll do the same step both times. It keeps telling me to check my bottom thread, but my bottom thread, I make sure I wind up bottom before uh oh it's not the bottom thread either it's the upper thread it, it tells you it's been telling me check my bottom thread and then my bottom thread has been okay because i wanted to make sure i had a full bobbin that i didn't have to stop and then my thread must have when you use the uh cutters on here they sometimes cut it too short and then it pulls out. Alright, so I'm going to go back here. And re -sew that. Okay, so now we got that done. We're going to go back. We're going to cut just in uh, the other side of the line going towards your corner. Okay, so now we have this all done. <clears throat> I've already, <clears throat> excuse me, sewed the other piece to save time so I didn't bore you. So now you got one piece like this. And now you you sold your you got to sew your other piece, you sew your other piece, and what you're going to do is you're going to turn this one wrong side out. So that both of the fabrics are are facing each other. That's very important because if you put it the other way, you're going to have this on one side of your bow holder and that on the other. So you want to make sure you put both sides of the fabrics together. And then we go around and we just put some pins in here. You can pin every part if you want. I usually um, can get mine lined up pretty good that uh, I only pin the corners. You just pull that down and rake it down in there and then I'll bring it down to where you need it. Batting's a little long there. Just trim that. I want to make sure that that matches up. There you 
I've got a crappy pen. Like I said, I'll be moving right along and then all of a sudden it'll be kind of crappy. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put, I got pens in all four corners, and I'm going to put a pen this right here. You could pick any spot you want, but you want to put some kind of reminder because we're going to leave from this pen to here. I'm just going to sew a little bit around this corner because I don't like to leave it open to the corner. I like to make my corner. So we're going to leave a little bit of this open. And uh, you can put a pen on both sides if you want so you know not to sew there. That way you can, we're going to have to turn this wrong side out and you're going to need a spot to do it. So this way you're not sewing around. The next thing you know you sewed the whole thing closed. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna, I got the pens where I'm going to leave my opening. I'm going to start up here so that I have a full corner of stitching and I'm not breaking the stitch here. So we're going to bring it back under and what I do, it's about a half inch I come in and I sew all the way around. My back stitch, I get that going. All I'm doing is turning this. I don't know how good you're going to be able to see this. I'm going to bring it the best I can so that you can see this and you can use your foot as a guide okay I think the thread got messed up under there For some reason it's been acting up there's my little knife here I don't know what's going on with this but it's been acting up so sometimes it happens Get my thread out. Uh, thread caught and bind it up. I just clip that off. Get all the thread out of there. Somehow, I think this bobbin has a crack in it or something. I really do. We might have to run another bobbin here. Okay. Things happen when you're sewing. Just got to get the right part going here. So I know where I'm at. Okay, so what I'm going to do is, I'm not going to mess with that, it takes too long, but I don't want to waste all that thread. I'm looking to make sure that I don't have another bobbin because one of these okay so we're going to drop that down in there move that over there I'll have to fix that other bobbin in a little bit oh, that. Sorry about that. Okay, so now, once again, like I said, we'll uh, start back over here where we started before it messed up on us. And then we're going to just turn it. I know if you can see it really good, but I'm trying to make it so you can see it. I'm just turning it. And I just kind of want to get to the corner, kind of like just turn it so that it will angle with that.
turning it again. Pulling that pen. It's in the way. I'm at a corner, so I'm just kind of turning it. I pull that pen because it's too close. soon here. today. It's being naughty. Okay, so we're going to pull all of our pins. Pull all the pins out. Make sure there's none. And then now what we're going to do is we're going to go snip all the corners just a little bit. Don't cut your stitching, whatever you do. And then we'll we're going to find our part, our opening, and I'm going to reach to this far corner over here where I'm coming in, and I'm going to push that through. Okay, so now we got that all reached through. I'm going to take my dowel rod and I'm going to put it in the hole and I'm going to find the corners and then I'm going to pop this up and push out the corners real good. Okay. Do that to each one of the corners. This way and get this corner by the opening. Okay, so now <clears throat> you have it all in there. This is what it looks like. Pull, it, pull your fabric, and where your opening is, is you're gonna tuck that fabric in, and then you're gonna press that close which I've already done that so that you didn't have to wait for me. So I've got it all pressed closed right now. Oh, where's my opening? This is my opening. I've got it pressed closed. Now what we're going to do is we're going to stop top stitch. I run my foot along here and then I get really close so I make sure that I grab both of those and we top stitch all the way around. And That's all we do. I'm going to start past the corner so I'm not ending on a corner. And I just ride my foot right here. I, don't, I know you can't see it, but um, let's see if I can bring this down a minute. Let's see if you can see. I've just run my foot right here on the edge of the fabric. One foot's on and one foot's off. It gives me the perfect... Uh, amount of spacing and then now all we have to do is sew that and then that will keep your space even all the way around too and it gets a little tricky by the sometimes it wants to stick on the parts that we cut earlier and pinch together but you just slow down and take your time and it'll it'll go and I lift my foot and I change directions cut 
because now we're going through, you know, not only two pieces of batting, it's like, because it's folded there, because where the seam was, it's like four pieces of batting and like four pieces of fabric because you have it folded and sewn so it, you know, starts adding up again. It's no longer two, it becomes more. These are pretty fast and easy to make. Good gifts, good money makers, and just good fun crafts. And if you use your foot as a guide, you don't ever have to worry about if you're keeping the right amount of space. I do about a half an inch when I first sew it, and then this is like a quarter of an inch. And then we're back around and we should line up right on that stitch and then we'll go back stitch and then we'll just cut it. The thread and we'll go around and cut any extra threads anywhere we have hanging out. And you got your ball holder. So that's how easy it is. And this one, like I said, this is the 12 by 12. And this fits this really big serving bowl. So I hope you try to make them. They're pretty easy. I'll leave the directions down below uh, for you. And the sizes and everything so that uh, you can do it. Thank you.